I guess I'll open with that note first and uh, foremost. Uh, excited about Mike uh, White, his, his addition to our athletic department. Um, don't know him personally. Looking forward to getting to meet him today. I'm um, excited about his uh, large family. Uh, moving to Athens and uh, getting to be a part of a special university, so happy to have him. Uh, I'm excited about spring practice. Uh, this is actually my favorite time of year, believe it or not. Um, I like the fact that you have one practice and then you have a day off to teach, and then you have another practice and you have another day off to teach, and it slows things down uh, for the players. So if you enjoy coaching football and the relationships you get to have with the players, this is the best time of year. Um, because you literally get to sit in a meeting room, teach, go at a much slower pace for the guys. And we've obviously got a lot of uh, holes to fill, and we've got a lot of young players on this roster that are excited about uh, filling those roles. Um, we've had probably six weeks of pretty intense workouts. I think our uh, strength staff has done a tremendous job, and as is the case in all businesses, really, when you look at it, when you have success, Sometimes you have change and people get opportunities. So we've got uh, you know, two new strength coaches, uh, four new position coaches, uh, several new uh, quality control people, so a lot of new faces. Um, one thing you, that you benefit from is you get a lot of uh, different ideas and knowledge from those people. So uh, the additions we've made to our staff have been tremendous. They are bright, uh, some of them bright young coaches, some of them very experienced coaches but all of them fit our culture and our criteria and that probably excites me most because um, our players have gotten to know these guys in really a short amount of time. It's been a quick turnaround uh, relative to the amount of time we've had and I'm excited about where our team's headed, where our guys are going, the roles that have been embraced. Um, you know, we've continued with our school sessions and kind of our uh, player development in terms of character and leadership and a lot of holes. Like There's a lot of uh, questions to be answered from our team uh, for guys leaving. So I'm excited to see what this group can do and uh, take on the personality of their team and some of that's already started. So um, it's a couple injuries that, of guys that'll be out. We, we traditionally have, I think the years we've been here, we've had six or seven guys out uh, every spring, uh, mostly with postseason surgeries. This year, we had a little more with our incoming freshmen. So we've had 19 incoming freshmen, but several of those guys uh, are out for the spring as well. So of our returning guys, most of you guys know Brock's out uh, for the spring with shoulder surgery. Um, Ryan Davis will be able to do some things, but he's been out since uh, in fall, uh, about mid-season. Uh, Smile Munden's out with a, a labral repair, very similar to what uh, Nicobe had last year. He had the same one. Taki uh, is still you know, dealing with his ACL. He's, back running, moving around, but he's right where he should be, but he's not going to go through spring. And then uh, Darnell Washington is going to be out as well for spring. He's got a lower uh, leg extremity that's going to keep him out. But all those guys are promising they'll have uh, good returns. And then our mid-years, of our 19 mid-years, I think we have like five guys that required surgeries, which we knew these guys would require surgery. And the positive is we're going to have them back for fall camp. But Bear had a labral repair, Jacob Hood, um, had ankle surgery, CJ Madden had labral repair, Griffin Scroggs, shoulder uh, surgery, and then uh, CJ Smith's coming off of some meniscus repair, but he's able to do some things. So that's not abnormal for us to have some guys out and injured. It gives an opportunity for some other guys, uh, and hopefully those mid-year kids will be ready to rock and roll uh, here you know, for summer and summer workouts where the NCAA has granted us um, more time to spend with them and put our defense and offense and special teams in place. So with that, I'll open it up. If you raise your hand, we'll uh, get a microphone to you. <laughs> Coach, uh, uh, can you talk about what the uh, status is of uh, Avery Gilbert in terms of uh, C's on the roster, where he'll fit in and, and his prospects going forward. Yeah, Eric's done a great job uh, kind of integrating back to the team. He's been here for a while now. Um, he's done the work we've asked of him. He's doing well academically. Um, you know, I think there's this perception and it affects college football athletes more than anybody else because they're younger that this, this, this recruiting stigma follows someone and these expectations follow kids. And I look across and follow guys that 
maybe we signed here or signed somewhere else, and they carry this really heavy uh, burden of expectation. We, we don't place that burden on anybody. I think sometimes they put it on themselves. I think sometimes social media does it. I think sometimes uh, media in general do it. But for whatever reason, Eric's a guy that's carried a lot of that burden with him in terms of expectation. Our expectation of Eric is to be the best person he can be first and foremost and uh, hopefully be the best player he can be. He's had a really good offseason. He continues to work. But that doesn't put an expectation of this guy's going to go out there and set the world on fire. He's trying to figure out where he fits in, and he's working really hard. He's done everything we've asked. Uh, he's fortunate he's going to get a lot of reps because of the two guys we have out. So he's going to get a lot, a lot of reps. Rylan Goaty's going to get a lot of reps. Brett Scyther's going to get a lot of reps. Delp's going to get a lot of reps. So we've got guys that are going to take reps in those roles at tight end. But I think sometimes uh, the expectation is so great on these kids it can affect them psychologically. Kirby, you made reference at the uh, national celebration, national championship celebration, not burning down the boats. Um, I want to ask you about the kind of the approach that your team has taken coming off the national championship. Is it what you liked in the you know the month since? Well, we, we, when we came back and went to work for those six weeks, that's we put that to the side. You know, we don't we're we're not communicating, talking about that. That that's something they'll be able to have the rest of their life. We always talk about it here. We've talked about it since we won the SEC. You don't defend a title. You guys want it to be that way, but that's not what we do. We, we start afresh, just like we would when we lost to Texas in a bowl game. We start completely new, and that's so hard, I think, for the media to grasp that it's not hard for us because we go into a different part of the program, which is the off-season conditioning program. What's different about the off-season conditioning program than what it has been in the past? Not a whole lot. We're, we're doing the same things we did to build up to the point we went to last year. We certainly have different faces and different people in the places. And I think you know they're right where they need to be. They're not like way behind schedule. They're not way ahead of schedule. We, we have holes to fill just like we do every year, probably just more this year than in years past based on uh, the guys leaving and the departure. We also have more mid-years here to fill some of those roles. And uh, we're certainly not deep enough at several positions but I'm not here to cry about it. I'm here to solve it and figure it out and, and get the best guys. That's what that's what you do as a coach, right? You, you you coach the players. So that movement for us has been long past. I think that'll be the the play and the talk of the media as last year, but not for us. Uh, we're, we're we're really worried about creating an identity for this team. We're in the identity phase. Spring practice is like, who are we? Let's figure out who we are by how we practice, and I think we'll see that over the next 15 practices. Kirby, uh, one housekeeping question on big picture on coaches. Uh, are you able to say who's going to call defense and the second part? You, you brought back a lot of guys, a lot of coaches that were here uh, before. What's the, what, was there any thinking in that, or is it just these were the best available guys for those jobs? No, we went through an interview process uh, at every position. I mean, interviewed multiple people at each and every position. Think about what's the best overall for our program for our culture we've built here, uh, take input from the coaches on the staff that have been here a long time, uh, Dale McGee, uh, Glenn Schumann, these guys have been part of our program, Trey Scott, they are the culture. And we want people that want to be here and want to be part of that. It's very demanding um, what's required of college coaches. And I think you've seen uh, a lot of guys move on to the NFL, you've seen guys step out, you've seen uh, guys go on to other places, but. It's not going to ever change at the University of Georgia. The standard of excellence that you want to have in recruiting and spending time with your players, and these four people meet those criteria. They're also uh, people I trust, and some I've known, some I have not known. Um, but the ones that we didn't know, we did a lot of research on and felt like they were best for the job. And then as far as the defensive play calling, I think that's way overblown. Big deal to you guys, not a big deal to us. We know what we're doing in-house, and that's the focus. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Kirby, Jordan Hill and Dogs 247. You talk about the spring and how valuable it is, especially for the early enrollees. Just how much value do they get in coming in and, and the impact, not even for this season, but two or three years down the road for them? Yeah, it's more important for their degree, right? They get an extra semester of classes. They get 15 hours towards their um, graduation. And that that's the most important thing to me is that. Um, for, the, for for five of them, it's, it's about getting the best rehab you could possibly get in the country, maybe the world, 
as opposed to being sitting in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and having a surgery and, and not having the rehab facilities that maybe your high school has, you're getting that here. So to get those guys and the care they need so they don't re-injure, so they don't uh, have setbacks, we get to have them right here underneath our, 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 our tutelage and our care. So um, there's no value you can put on that. But, you know, there's other kids, there's six or seven other kids that aren't here. And I don't think they're in a deficit either because they're able to get on Zooms, they're able to sit in on meetings, they're able to get playbooks, uh, and those guys begin to learn too so that when they get here over the summer, we can integrate them as well. I think the 19 guys here now are going to benefit from reps because there's a lot of reps available for those 19 mid-years. Yeah, Kirby, um, I guess following up on coaches, I want to ask you about Coach uh, Uzo Garibe, obviously a very young guy. and. Seems like he relates really well to the, to the players on the team. Just what have you seen in terms of the, the dynamic, I guess, he's at that outside linebacker room? Yeah, Chidera gives us great energy, enthusiasm, played the position, uh, easy to recruit outside backers, defensive ends at the University of Georgia because we've produced a lot of them. But it's also easy to recruit to him because he played the position with uh, tremendous success, had a stint in the NFL, uh, got a really good track record, high character, uh, very enthusiastic, and, and we've seen the impact on our players uh, with what he's done. Yeah, Kerr, I think you did an interview with Mike Krzyzewski during this offseason when he talked about how intense of a coach you are. And you said maybe, I think you said something effective, maybe too intense. And I wondered, when from season to season, you always look to improve and change things. Will you do things any differently? What are some of the changes? And then the, the players at the Combine brought up the microphone. You can't hide from the microphone. Is that always going to be a staple for you to carry the microphone and, and uh, coach up guys throughout the course of practice? or? Do you think you'll delegate some of that eventually? I, don't, I think it's the personality that your team takes on. You know, I think each one of those guys would tell you that's, that's easy to talk about and laugh about because they probably had an experience within their career where uh, things got demanded upon them uh, through that microphone that, that maybe impacted them, maybe made them better, maybe challenged them. Um, but I also think every team's different. You know, I, I actually was probably less on the microphone last year than ever before because it didn't require it on a day-to-day -day basis. When Kobe Dean and Quay Walker are holding you accountable, why do I need to? You know, and uh, there's an there's individual team part that like, okay, what is the identity of each team? What does it take on? What do they need more of? What do they need less of? So I, I can't foresee the future and I don't know what this team is gonna need, but if they need, uh, TLC, then we'll give them TLC. If they don't, then and they need to be pushed, then, then we'll try to see that. That's part of being a coach, and I can't answer what that looks like because I don't think every team is the same. I think every team is extremely different because the personality of that team is usually made up of the players. Even though your focus is, uh, is looking ahead, can you uh, reflect on the pride factor that you have when uh, your guys who are leaving have, have uh, uh, grabbed some headlines at the uh, NFL Combine? They'll be on display again tomorrow. You can also address the specific challenge of the replacing the guys on the defensive front, which maybe have, have really uh, stood out in these combine situations. Yeah, we, we, we saw this coming two or three years ago. You know, we, 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 we even had the, the fear that we might have been replacing those guys last year, you know, had they not decided to stay. So um, that's been a, a, a preparation deal for us. You're always looking two, three years ahead sometimes, and you know where you're, you're maybe have a deficit or you're not as good or maybe you're better at certain positions. but. Um, that's a focus we take on each and every year. Um, so that'll be a challenge for us. Lost a lot of good defensive players, lost some really good wideouts. So um, it's on to the next, and you got to create your identity through who you have, and that's what you do as a coach. And you know, you do the best job you can with it and try to get the most out of them. But certainly proud of those guys. And uh, coming over here to this meeting, I ran into a bunch of them. And they're, they're getting to see new parts of our building that they had not seen, and uh, it's great to see them. I'm really happy for them. Uh, so many of those guys, you know, worked their tail off. It, they didn't get there through some easy deal. They, they, they worked really hard, and that's what our players now have to understand. It doesn't come easy. Coach, uh, as far as uh, Stetson Bennett goes, what kind of, uh, I guess, continued growth have you seen from him in the uh, offseason workout as far as the, those other three guys are behind him right now? What are you looking for them for this spring? Yeah, we're looking to develop each and every one. I think all four of those guys are in different spots. I mean, you can go all the way from Gunner just getting here to Stetson being 23, 24 years old 
and haven't seen a lot of football. So they're they're in different spots, all four guy, four guys. The biggest challenge for us for the spring is to get reps and develop because we don't have the depth at the skill positions, receiver and defensive back and even tight end, to be able to do some of the things we like to do practice-wise. So we're trying to be innovative, creative in the way we practice because uh, quarterback development is critical. So if you have quarterbacks that aren't able to get reps, how do they get better? So I'm big on challenging our, our staff to be creative in the ways we rep those guys, who goes with what groups, how many reps a week you get, what percentages. Um, we want to see those guys get better. It's easy, you know, when you have three groups of offensive linemen, they all they all get work. But you might have four quarterbacks, and it's hard to get those guys to work. So wanting to see those guys improve, um, you know, they can't all play. So it's a matter of growing them to get them in a position to where they can be successful. Kirby, another quick injury update. Um, Tresman Marshall, Tate Ratledge, Aaron Smith, all three of them had their season cut short. What's their status coming into the spring? Yeah, they're all running, moving, doing things. Aaron's been able to take some reps. Aaron will be practicing with us some. Not the 100%, but he'll be able to practice with us. Tate's coming off the, uh, the foot injury. He's not going to be able to take reps in the spring, but he's weight bearing, he's running, he's doing some activity there uh, and able to take walkthrough reps. So I kind of take him in a different mode. If he's not out for the entire spring, he's just not going to get to go live with us. But the progress has been great for both those guys. And then Tresman is doing some running, some cutting. He's got a knee brace on. He'll be able to take some reps, but not uh, 100%. Uh, for the record, I think Anthony's question about quarterbacks was 15 minutes in. <laughs> that that was meant. That's the longest we took to get quarterbacks. And hey, y'all turn a new lease. <laughs> uh, you, you had experience at Alabama coming off national championships, but 41 years is a different animal. Is there something you want to do, you have to do with this team to make sure that there is a clean break and a new start, or do you not want a clean break, a new start mentality? Well, let's be clear, you know, we won a national championship because we had really good players who played well together, right? So usually the team that wins the national championship is a unified group. I mean, I can go through the last couple of years, it was like this really great group of special players at LSU, they won a national championship. Really good group, special leaders at Alabama, they won a national championship. We had a really good group. So we're trying to like develop our team to emulate what, what what is your identity? Is it gonna be supreme talent with great character, with great leadership? Is the leadership and character gonna outweigh the talent? We're trying to figure out what this team's identity is completely independent of the previous years. Um, and there's, there's you know, when you look out there, there's not as much experience. There's good football players on this roster, um, but we gotta get those guys in position to be successful. And our job as coaches is to grow them. So I'm not, I'm gonna repeat, I am not, you know, worried about living in the past. That's our job to make sure these kids grasp that uh, what they do is in front of them. I mean, the wind blows a lot harder at the top, but we've been up there. So it's not like we've been at the tip top, but it's been blowing pretty good where we were. So we, we got to do a good job, continue to develop our guys and get our guys ready to play. You mentioned earlier Glenn Shun being an important part of the culture here, entering his now seventh season with you guys. How have you seen him grow as a, as a position coach and ultimately taking on more responsibilities as a co-defensive coordinator? Well, he's always trying to grow and get better. You know, he's never uh, satisfied. I think a lot of times you can get complacent. It sets in on all of us. This is what we do. We don't ever want to be complacent. So that's just not what I believe in. We're always trying to find a different way to do it better, and I think. Uh, Glenn epitomizes that. He's he's constantly on Zooms with NFL guys. He talks to high school coaches. Uh, he's a sponge. He doesn't think he knows it all. He's always trying to find a better way to do it, to reinvent himself as a coach. And I think that his players play really hard. They have a, a, a passion and energy for him that they want to be successful. I mean, to do what he's done with those three guys that are coming out this year is really pretty special. Number one, he helped recruit them. He helped identify them and then he helped mold them into good players. So there's a pedigree there that he's able to recruit to. I've got a question about a preferred walk-on that y'all signed uh, on National Signing Day. Cedron Brundage from Putnam County, what did y'all like out of him, you and Coach McGee, uh, so late in the process right before y'all got Andrew Paul? Well, he lives in a rural area. There's not a lot of foot traffic, I call it, through there. You wouldn't say that's a heavily recruited uh, school. They don't get a lot of traffic. He's a guy that we thought was a really good football player. Um, we've had a lot of success here 
in our walk-on program. You can look throughout our history. You can look over the last six years. We've had guys earn scholarships left and right, and he's got the talent to do that. He's a really good football player, and uh, we felt like he could help our roster. And um, you know, we're a little bit thinner at, at running back than we've been in the past too. So we're hoping he can help us there. Now, two more very quick questions. Uh, yeah, Kirby, you mentioned being prepared to replace some of those guys on the defensive line. I guess Zion Logue specifically seems like a guy that is prepared to step into a bigger role. Just what have you seen from him developing maybe this spring, and, and is he prepared to you know kind of fill the shoes of some of those guys? Well, those are big shoes to fill. So we, we don't do comparisons. We let you guys stick with comparisons. You know, I think comparisons can be bad for people when they try to compare. I think what's good about Zion, he's a great leader. He's a great kid. He is the perfect example of a guy that has matured and he's grown. He used to have academic problems freshman year, wouldn't go to this, wouldn't at this, and now he, for the last year, he's not on list. He handles his weight, he practices really hard, he's hit a strength, of, uh, a little bit extra strength in the weight room that's going to help make, help make him a better player. Um, we got high expectations for him. Um, he's going to take on a larger role, but uh, his role may not be the same as, as what those guys was. I think you'll have some data on the skull sessions now. How tough of a sell was that for you as a concept to bring that into what y'all did day to day in your position groups? And were you surprised by how much of an impact that had on, on the results? Well, we don't do it day to day. That would be probably overkill. We, we space it out. Uh, different times of the year, it's one time a week. Sometimes it's two times a week. Sometimes it's no times a week based on where we are in our program. But. Um, uh, it wasn't a hard sell for me because I felt like we needed to change. I felt like we had had several years of kind of repeated results and we wanted to bring some new ideas and new energy in and we tried to twist those this year some to change it up because we're kind of a different team. But I certainly am pleased with the results and that's why we're continuing to do it because I think it's important for our players to hear messages from their coaches and then also from each other. It allows them to stand up in front of each other and talk and I think it had a direct impact on these guys that went to the combine because not just their workouts, their workouts were great, but the way they talked and carried themselves, they got a lot of practice doing that here. And I think that was big for them. So thanks. thank you. Reminder the players are waiting upstairs on the second floor. Top of the Steve was throwing my car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'm not surprised by that. That's what Munkin said. I yeah. There we go. You guys, because it was not fully repaired, and you received it three days ago, according to UPS. And I have not received it. I have not received anything else that I can refer to. Talk to me. Oh, so. Get started having a couple minutes later. Okay.